Thank you for joining us today. I'm joined today by General Matt Quinn, the Executive Director of our COVID-19 response, and also Todd O'Hare, President and CEO of the Montana Chamber of Commerce. I want to give you a brief update on our approach to the pandemic, particularly about how we're improving the directives and providing much needed relief to Montana small businesses. As we continue to confront the challenges associated with this pandemic, we have good news. Last week, we changed the state's vaccine distribution plan to prioritize and protect the most vulnerable. We carefully reviewed the data and want to ensure Montanans most at risk from complications or death related to the virus have access to the vaccines first. We are focusing our efforts on our neighbors, friends, and family who are most at risk of hospitalization or death if they contract the virus. Focusing, focusing on the most vulnerable will save lives. Healthcare and seniors groups support these critical changes, including the Montana Medical Association, the Montana Hospital Association, the Montana Primary Care Association, the American Cancer Society, uh, and AARP. And we're ahead of the curve. Just yesterday, the federal government recommended similar changes to the vaccine distribution plans to prioritize the most vulnerable nationally. I'm encouraged that many localities are prepared to begin delivering vaccines under phase 1B, which is the most vulnerable in our communities. Of the 12 counties DPHHS has reached out to, 11 have signaled that they're ready to move to phase 1B. And DPHHS has communicated to jurisdictions to plan and prepare for phase 1B beginning the week of January 18th. It's worth noting that Montana is one of the best states in the country for vaccine distribution. Montana ranks ninth in the country. As of yesterday, 42,000 Montanans have received their first dose of the vaccine. And almost half of that occurred just last week. We are ramping up vaccine distribution with a focus on the most vulnerable. Based on conversations I recently had with Walgreens executives, they're taking care of our long-term care facilities and nursing homes. They are on target to provide first doses of vaccine to 97% of long-term care facilities by the end of January. We're all aware of the health impact of this pandemic. As of today, DPHHS reports 1,069 total deaths and nearly 88,000 uh, cases of the virus here in Montana. The agency reports 597 new cases and 199 active hospitalizations as of today. The trend lines are encouraging, but this doesn't account for the indirect health impacts, increased cases of suicide, greater drug use and abuse, and more cases of domestic violence and child abuse. It also doesn't account for the severe economic impact of the pandemic that has left Montanans out of work and without a paycheck through no fault of their own. And it doesn't account for the decision that too many small business owners have had to make to close their businesses for good, leaving behind what they've worked so hard to build. Improving our response to the pandemic has been my top priority. After being elected, I set up the COVID-19 task force, which includes medical professionals and small business owners, among others. I charged it with examining our state's response, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and what we should do differently. We also encouraged Montanans to have their hurt, voices heard as well, and they reached out to us. One of the central concerns that small business owners nonprofit organizations and civic leaders identified is the existing directives. Many of the folks we talked to were very frustrated. They were loud and clear. They feel the layers of existing directives are too complex, confusing, and difficult to implement. They feel elements of the existing directives are arbitrary, 
particularly the hours of operation restrictions and capacity limitations. We've carefully reviewed the pages and pages of directives. Before taking any action, we consulted with public health experts, healthcare providers, and business leaders and emergency management professionals. We took the time to get this right. As a result of that deliberate review and consultation, today I'm issuing, issuing a new directive that removes or replaces the cumbersome layers, cumbersome layers of existing ones. These new directives are clear. They are practical. They are common sense. And they're easy to understand. Gone are the 25 pages of overlapping and confusing directives. Our new directive is clear, and it fits on three pages. The directive I issue today makes two significant improvements that will reduce the burden on the, that small business owners have had to face all across the state, while still promoting health and safety of their employees and their customers. One, we are repealing existing directives that unduly restrict hours of operation for restaurants, bars, breweries, distilleries, and casinos. Two, we are repealing existing directives that impose arbitrary capacity limits. We emphasize that businesses should follow industry best practices to prevent the spread of the virus. Where industry best practices are not available, businesses should develop policies in accordance with federal, state, and local regulations and guidance. We can reduce the burden on our small business owners while simultaneously protecting the health of Montana workers and customers. These two are not mutually exclusive. The fact is we remain in the middle of a public health crisis and an economic crisis. And we will continue to make common sense steps to more effectively confront both. We are moving in the right direction. And I look forward to a day when we can all take off our masks, masks, throw them in the trash, and get on with our lives in a safe manner. Until we get there, I continue to choose to wear a mask, and I encourage others to do the same. I'll now turn it over to Todd O'Hare, President and CEO of the Montana Chamber of Commerce, for some remarks. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Governor Gianforte. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Within days of Governor-elect um, winning the election in November, I received a phone call from Greg, and he had um, asked me to serve on behalf of the Montana business community through the Montana Chamber of Commerce on the COVID-19 response task force. And we jumped at that opportunity, and we started almost immediately in looking at the recommendations and the directives that the state was operating under then. And at the time, it was probably the most uh, uniformly agreed upon decision is that the closure mandate of 10 p.m. was unduly harmful for all businesses. And um, there was uh, agreement that lifting that sort of a mandate would be something that would be welcome. And if you think about a business, particularly that in the restaurant and uh, bar um, business sector, um, if they have to close by 10 p.m., then the wait staff and the operations start to come to an end around 9.15 or 9.30. And so the amount of hours that a business has available in order for them to make their monthly payments and payroll is severely restricted. And so this was one of several recommendations that came from that task force and we look forward to continuing to work with Governor Gianforte in the days and the weeks ahead until we emerge from this COVID pandemic uh, safely. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Todd. Now I'm ready to take some questions. Who'd like to be first? Holly? Um, I'm wondering as you were going through and creating this directive, if there was data that you were looking at that showed how many cases of COVID were tied to these types of businesses like bars, restaurants, and casinos. If there's, I've seen that there's not great information about that, but wondering what you were looking at as you were 
going through this process? Yeah, within days, we'll actually be issuing the report from the COVID task force, but their input is reflected here. Um, and uh, uh, the goal here was to peel these layers of directives back so we have very common sense rules that any business owner can understand and implement. Uh, I'm encouraged by both the vaccine distribution that we've had uh, and the continued decline in new cases and hospitalizations. I, I noted in my comments, we're now under 200 people in the hospital in Montana. Now, that could spike back up. We're not out of the woods yet, uh, but the trend is encouraging. And I'm looking forward to this light at the end of the tunnel getting a little brighter. Governor Zach yeah. Kaplan, Montana right now. Just a clarifying question as it relates to both the 10 p.m. rule and the capacity rule. Are those both effective immediately or is there a time? That's a very good effective? question, Zach. Uh, this new directive takes effect uh, in about 48 hours. It'll take effect Friday morning. That's included in the directive that we'll give you. Uh, so people have a couple days to prepare for this. We'll take a question online. Hi, Governor Jean Forte. This is Maritza from NBC Montana. And I'm wondering, in light of the CDC issuing new guidance yesterday um, about people 65 and older being eligible for the vaccine, are you sticking with that 70 and older for 1B, or are you going to lower it to 65? Well, first, I will, I'll let General Quinn address this here in a second. But first, I want to say it's, it's great to see the CDC following our lead. I mean, we took this step last week, uh, emphasizing the most vulnerable in our communities. Uh, and it's critical that we get vaccine to them. This is going to save lives. General Quinn, did you comment? Yeah, so um, it's General Quinn. I, we, we don't see us changing those directives or the, uh, the age limit. As we looked at this here last week, rolling into the change that Montana made, 75% of our deaths have been in age 70 and over. And that's why after careful analysis, the age of 70 was chosen. So to keep it clear with the counties out there trying to trying to do the vaccine work and prioritize, we're gonna keep it for now at the age of 70. Thank you. And as I would just add that as we move through 1B, clearly we would extend to other folks and a logical next step would be lowering the age. Next question. Yes. Um, I've heard a lot of frustration from Montana teachers store clerks that being pushed back now on the vaccine timeline. Why reprioritize some Montanans over others who are also considered essential workers? Because we're trying to minimize death. And the reality, it's a, these are incredibly difficult decisions. But at the end of the day, we know from the medical experts, certain people are more likely to have complications and die from this virus. Uh, we've made the decision last week and we're continuing it today. We're going to get to the vaccine to the people that would have the most severe complications or possibly death. Uh, I think that's the right decision that I think an awful lot of folks, including many of the medical organizations that I mentioned here, are supportive of. I'd like to give the vaccine to everybody today. We just don't have enough supply yet. Take another online. Hi, Governor. This is Mara from Montana Free Press. Um, Following up on that, um, can you talk a little bit about the, the supplies that you are expecting to receive in the coming weeks? Um, I think you said January 18th um, is, is when some counties could move into phase B. Um, and I'm wondering uh, if there are some counties that are ready to move into phase B currently and, and how, um, I guess, how they're waiting to receive uh, more supplies from the state. Great. I'm going to let General Quinn address the, the detailed aspect of that. Let me just say we are, we're meeting with the task force twice weekly. Uh, I'm encouraged that we're getting weekly deliveries. Uh, and uh, we have quite a bit of vaccine in the state already and more arriving every week. So, General Quinn. Yes. Yeah, so, as uh, Governor GM Forte has mentioned, uh, supply is limited. Um, this week, we expect about 6,400 doses of Moderna coming in. Uh, next week, we expect to see about 13,500 Moderna and Pfizer doses coming in. Those are first doses. But at the same time that we're tracking those first doses, be aware that we've got about 20,000 second dose uh, coming in of both Moderna and Pfizer. So as our health uh, care experts are doing vaccinations on the first dose that we're tracking very closely, we're also uh, need to be aware that they're doing the second dose as well. 
I would just add, we currently, with the shipments we got in December and have gotten in January, we have over 70,000 first doses in the state of Montana. That is in excess of the entire population of the 1A category. Uh, even if 100% of those people accepted the vaccine. So uh, it's, you are right. Some communities are in a position to start moving into 1B. Uh, most communities will move into 1B next week. Another online question? Yeah, this is Renee Jean with the Sydney Herald. And I was wondering, what are the 11 communities that are moving to phase 1B? And what kind of timeline can we expect out here in eastern Montana for, say, Sydney and Miles City to move to 1B? So thank you for the question. I mean, the most vulnerable in our communities are people elderly in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. That is part of 1A. Uh, that's why in my comments I was pleased to report that uh, the executives of Walgreens, which are handling a large portion of these, believe that by the end of January, actually by the 27th of January, 97% of the long-term care facilities and nursing homes that Walgreens is responsible for will have had vaccine clinics and they will have their first doses. That includes Eastern Montana. Uh, we don't have the names of the particular counties here today uh, that DPHH has spoke to, but we'll be in touch with all of them. Question here? Yeah. Governor Jonathan Amberry in Montana Television Network. Uh, Several of the county uh, health boards, they've instituted in the last few weeks their own rules, which a lot of cases include capacity and our restrictions. What is your, uh, what is your response to them at this point now that you've made this change on the state level? Yeah, so nothing we're doing today changes the authority of local agencies. I will say uh, that this directive is simple uh, common sense, straightforward, and I believe based on the input that we've done through the COVID task force, the best path forward for the state of Montana and, mo and most communities. Another question, Holly, you had another? Um, I'm wondering if there's been any more progress on people who are in this, the next phase we're going into and have those health conditions that would qualify them, sort of how they would go about getting the vaccine, you know, if they don't especially have a regular health care provider, they see like who they would contact, just how that process works, if there's any more details about that. Okay, that's a good question. Um, and I know Governor Quinn has been working with public health officials via DPHHS. Possibly you could comment on that? Yeah, thanks, Holly, for the question. So we're working um, through public health with all of the county public health agencies across the state as well as the hospitals to make sure that they're putting information up and getting it out to the public for how, uh, as we roll into 1B, those individuals that are within 1B can get their vaccine. So I think you'll see on quite a few county uh, public health sites uh, a number to call or um, an appointment scheduler to, to make an appointment. Many are reaching out to the patients that they know of that qualify within 1B saying, hey, let's get your name on the, on the list if you're interested. So they're each working through that individually and I think doing a really good job as we open up the aperture into the 1B uh, arena to make sure that the most vulnerable are taken care of. And just one follow-up, I've had a lot of people reach out and ask sort of about documentation of their health conditions. What does that look like? So I think that, uh, Holly, I think the question is on the documentation. That would be through their medical provider if there's documentation uh, required for that serious underlying condition. Obviously age, um, fairly easy, but it's that serious underlying and that they would work through their medical provider. Okay, we'll take another online question. Hi, Governor Jim Forte, it's Maritza again from NBC Montana. I've had, off the subject of COVID for a second, I've had a lot of people reach out coming days with uh, warnings from the FBI over armed protests across the country. And I'm wondering if you have a message for Montanans and what you think the state should be doing right now to ensure the safety of everyone involved. Well, I, you know, we had protesters here at the Capitol last week. Uh, they were exercising their First Amendment rights. Uh, they did it in a peaceful manner. Uh, as I said last week, I think the, our nation's capital could have taken a page uh, out of the book. We are getting briefings on potential threats, and uh, I just want to 
assure Montanans that we'll be ready. Another, there's another question online. Yep. Hi, Governor Dean Forte, Keith Schubert here from the Daily Montana. Uh, we've heard that there are some problems getting the vaccine to the places it needs to go, like nursing homes. Were there any clogs that you're aware of in distributing the vaccine to long-term care facilities? And what percentage of the LTC and nursing home population is Walgreens responsible for? Uh, I'll let Governor Quinn address that. We've been talking about that weekly. Uh, Governor Quinn. Yes, so um, not aware of any uh, problems. The bulk of our long-term care and assisted living facilities are being handled by CVS and Walgreens. Um, all of the appointments, as uh, Governor Gianforte mentioned, we talked to Walgreens this week, and, and all appointments have been made for first, second, and third visits. And so I'm not aware of any difficulty uh, getting those vaccines. CVS and Walgreens is getting, are getting the shipments directly from the federal government uh, because they have the ultra-cold storage for the, the uh, Pfizer vaccine that's going to the long-term care and assisted living. And if I recall correctly from the briefing we had from Walgreens, Walgreens is responsible for about 128 facilities in the state of Montana. I think we divvied them up about 50-50 between CVS and Walgreens. Um, is there another question here? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Zach Kaplan, Montana Hi, Zach. right now again. Um, I'm wondering with the impeachment proceedings going on at Washington, there's been a lot of back and forth between Montana's own delegation, let alone across the country. I'm wondering if you have any comment on the proceedings and, uh, and just if you've been keeping an eye on it here from here in Montana. Yeah, mostly we've been focused on things here. I mean, the, we were horrified by the events that occurred in Washington last week, including um, uh, the deaths that occurred and the, just the the violation of our democracy and our constitution. Um, we're, uh, I, I am watching it. I will say that um, uh, the president is gonna be out of office here in a week. Um, I think it's time for us to start to heal and find common ground. There've been many steps that have been divisive. I, I think we should focus on bringing people together at this point. I expect uh, a peaceful transfer of power next week in Washington. Uh, and that will be welcomed. I think, Jonathan, you had another question? Uh, yes, uh, Governor, just briefly, Jonathan Amberry and MTN again, on, back on the uh, directive that you put out. Is there any change in there to the uh, gathering, uh, recommendation on size of gatherings? Yeah, so Jonathan, uh, it's a good question. We have moved to uh, general guidance that allows people to stay safe we're encouraging social distancing, masks when appropriate, appropriate hygiene, but we have removed any numeric limit on gatherings. And again, the whole concept here is we're going to move more to personal responsibility and away from specific mandates uh, because we trust Montanans with their health and the health of their loved ones. And again, I, I will just reiterate, uh, the vaccine's getting out, 42,000 people now have it in their arms. Uh, with more arriving every week. This is the path to the day when we can take off our mask, throw it in the trash, and go on with our lives in a safe manner. And I know all of us want to get to that point, and I'm, I hope it comes soon. So thank you very much for being here today.